do you know about what I'm going to do? It's where you can get news about the Jamaican culture and just learn about how Jamaicans are doing as a yard. Salut tout le monde, ici Kaya La Flamme. T'aimes le reggae en français, en anglais, qui est du Canada, du Québec et de la Jamaïque. Écoute Watagwan. So, Ropeen, I'm going to check out the thing now. It's Watagwan. I live in the UK and I enjoy tuning in to Watagwan. I am a big fan of Watagwan. I'm always looking forward for the great vibes, the great things. They discuss a lot of things that are going on in Calgary, across Canada, and of course Jamaica. So I this is what is going on in Jamaica. But check out Watagwan. You get to learn a new Jamaican part of word or even a Jamaican food. I look forward to the Quattro word of the day, feeding my nostalgic mood with flavor and spice. Only Jamaicans can do. Watch what I want. It happens every Friday, 7 p.m. So check them out and bye from Toronto. Watch what I want. Yo. Watch what I want. Relevant and entertaining, so keep up the good work. Watch what I want. Tune in, share, listen to what I want. Big up yourself, what I want. 2022. Bless up. What I want. Yes, I. What I want. Watch what I want. Always have a new Wagwan in my yard. Check it out. 7 p.m. every Friday. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of What Go On National. I am your host for this evening, Nadia Thompson. I am coming at you from beautiful Winnipeg, Manitoba, and it is still beautiful. It's a balmy day outside, and we are just happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy that you're here. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to get your people together. So we're all going to be joining in for this show because it's going to be a really good one. I hope you had a wonderful week. I had an excellent week, and like I said, the sun was shining. It was above 30 most of the day, so all those people that are making fun of winter pig, well, it's not winter pig this week, that's for sure, so we're having a wonderful time here. I am coming at you actually live from the Jamaican Association of Manitoba. We were privileged to have the High Commissioner here this week, and uh, she's actually speaking right now as we speak, so I had to sneak away and come on to see you guys because I didn't want to miss this show, so Thank you for being here. Make sure that you're getting um, commenting and coming, being involved in the conversation. We have a great show for you today. Um, we have a discussion of why did I come to Canada? We have our special guest today, Jason Martin and Shelly Morgan. So we look forward to that. But before we get to them, we are going to go into our Patwa word of the day. All right. So. I'm going to be Canadian today because I didn't know what this meant. So you're going to have to tell me and give me some more information about Dibby Dibby. Dibby Dibby? Yeah, Dibby Dibby. We'll go with that. <laughs> so you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I, I can't even give you some hints. So you're going to have to give me hints as to what the Patois word of the day actually means. So use the comment section and let us know what you believe, use it in a sentence, make some comments. That's the way that we, we get together, we interact is by your comments. So make sure that you're putting your comments in the comment section for your Patwa word of the day. Oh, so we have some information for what's going on around the um, region. So this week, last week, sorry, we talked about um, fatherhood with our two fantastic guests. It was a really great show. If you missed it, make sure you go back and look on our YouTube play page or our Facebook for that. And we discussed fatherhood. Um, Michael and Greg talked about the highs and the lows of being fathers. And um, what, it's, what stood out was that they both embraced their roles as fathers, even though they um, grew up without fathers of their own, which was a really great way to um, talk about fatherhood and the importance 
of, of being a father and the important role that they have taken on with their children. So it was a fantastic show. Like I said, if you haven't gotten a chance to see it, you can get a recap, watch it again live on our website, on Facebook, on YouTube channel, um, www.whattogoon.ca is where you can find all that information. We have some news from around the region. In Calgary, the JCAA is having their Grab and Galang on July 9th. The menu includes jerk chicken, fish, ackee and salt fish, and much more. Curbside pickup is available. Visit www.gcaalberta.com for more information and to order. Also in Calgary, the Afro-Caribbean Food Festival happens on July 23rd at St. Patrick Park. This is a free event, so make sure you bring all your family and friends, come out. You'll also be entertained by five-time Juno winner, Exco Levy. Um, that will be the star entertainment for the day. So make sure that's in Calgary. In Montreal, the Jamaica Association is hosting Retromania, a retro dance party on Saturday, June 25th at their building located at 4065 Rue Jean Talon, starting at 10 p.m. Tickets are at the door and they are $20. You can contact the Jamaican Association at 514-737-8229 for more information. In Toronto, the JCA Recovery Summer Picnic is on July 10th. You must book bus seats by the 24th of June. Early bird tickets are available for $35. After the, 30, after the early bird cutoff, they are $40. And for your children, it is $25. So make sure you check out all of those happenings across Canada. There's a lot of things going. Summer is just getting started. So you have a lot of things to participate in um, across Canada. We are going to move on to Spot the Place. During Spot the Place, we share pictures of places in Jamaica and Canada, and you're going to have to tell us where that place is. Today's spot, it is located in Ontario. That would be Canada this today. Uh, it draws over 30 million visitors a year, and this historic, historical site was formed 12,000 years ago. So that are your clues. This spot is beautiful. Obviously, you can tell by the pictures how beautiful it is. I have had the privilege of going and checking it out. It is much more magnificent in person than it is in pictures. But for those of you who know, put it in the chat. For those of you that need a little more information, some more hints, let us know. Oh, we got some really good guesses already. I don't know if you call them guesses, but we'll have some good stuff already. So, um, yeah. So keep going. We're going to go and reveal the actual spot at the end of the show. So for now, we will leave it at that. And we'll get back to that in a few. It is time to reason. And I'm going to bring on Donovan in a moment. Um, we have two special guests, as I said. Our topic today is what brought you to Canada. And I'm going to get Donovan on any moment now. <clears throat> Good evening, Donovan. I'll unmute. Hey, I'm getting an echo. Hey, <laughs> Nadia. In summary, Hi. Winnipeg. How are you? 
I wish I had a window to show you how beautiful. Oh no, I believe you. It's so it's so good. No, I I, I believe, believe you. Okay. I, like I said, you know, I, I don't have an issue that you know someone shows up on the part of the country every now and then. <laughs> so enjoy it, you know, while 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 I'm in it. Right, who who knows? We definitely will. Maybe yeah. the high commissioner brought the Jamaican sun and the heat with her. That's why. Well, you know, that's I why it's so nice today. Great high commissioner, great high commissioner. For those, uh, she's pl planning to reason with us in August as we celebrate Jamaica 60. Right, so Fantastic. Uh, putting out the word from now that she's going to be a part of us. Uh, but today we're going to have a reasoning about why did people come to Canada. So. I'll come back, I'll talk to Nadia a little more. Today, we've got Shelly Morgan, who came to Canada in 2018, in June, actually, uh, and Jason Martin, who uh, moved here back in 2014. Shelly moved from Jamaica to uh, Montreal, while Jason moved to Toronto, or that, that was his first stop. And uh, today, we wanted to bring them into a conversation as to as to why, and hopefully, that helps either some who are thinking of moving uh, to, to learn some stuff and those who have already moved might even you know gather a few things as we reason with these two uh, wonderful Jamaicans who have made the trip here to Canada. Shelley, Jason, welcome to Watagwan. How are things? Well, go ahead, Shelley. Well, I must say I'm very happy to be here because I know that so this is not no dibby dibby show. Uh, so well, there I, you go, right? Look at mm, that. Mm, mm. Yeah. No, no, not dibby dibby. Not, not no, dibby dibby show, a big thing. So, yeah, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Excited. <laughs> All right. Well, appreciate it as well um, to be here. Really looking forward to the conversation. And uh, like Shelly said, no dibby dibby thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Listen, I, I suppose moving, making a decision to move away from the rock is also no dibby dibby thing, right? In fact, when I made a decision many, many years ago, over 20 years ago, uh, I, I would never have imagined at one point that I would have made that decision because I was a big nationalist and, you know, I, I have to stay up on the rock and build a rock. But here I am off the rock, building the rock. So maybe, maybe we'll start. And Shelly, I'll, I'll give you first, first hit at this one. Uh, what, what, what led to the move? What, what was the, the, some of the reasons behind the, 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 the decision to move to Canada? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's weird because when in my early 20s, after I finished my first degree, I looked into migrating, but obviously I couldn't because I didn't have the funds to migrate. I had family here, but I had a strong root in Jamaica. And like you, I would actually cuss off people when they leave in Jamaica. I was grounded in the rock. Um, but when I finished my PhD, I still had a yearning for something else. There was still that push to, I think... And I thought about it today to, to experience living in another space. Um, and I went jogging one day and mm -hmm. I had a job at the University of the West Indies. I was well settled. I was just married. And I went jogging and I thought, just said Canada. I jogged back home. Come, I can't run. So I jogged <laughs> back home to my husband and I was like, um, you want to migrate to Canada? Poor thing was sleeping. And he looked up and he goes, oh, Canada, okay. Never know where hit him. After a couple of months, we never have nothing in our house. Can we give away everything? And <laughs> it was the express entry, very meticulous. But that that was it. That was it. It was just this yearning that I had, um, that I had to fulfill. Yeah. Jason, what, what, what's your story? What, what led to the move? <laughs> well, let me say good evening to the audience outside as well. Uh, straight up, I'll be honest with you, mine was more a, a wife decision. You know, they say happy wife, happy well, life. <laughs> And, um, you know, my wife wanted to do some studies. Her field of studies was uh, in sign language and stuff. And, you know, we don't have a lot of uh, entities in Jamaica that, that does that. And so mm -hmm. we started looking at us either going to the U.S. to one particular university or coming to Toronto for the other. And we're like, OK, uh, I don't want to go to the U.S. I'm not a U.S. fan. So let, let's let's choose Canada. But getting here proved to be its own challenge right so you're wondering okay how will i get here it wasn't an express entry so we're like okay let's do school let's really do it and uh, so we sat down look at it and say can this be done how can we do it and i, I remember sitting and having a conversation with 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 um you know one of my co-workers and he said yeah yeah it really can work i said i will i will attempt it 
I don't know, but honey, if if you if you go the route, we'll we'll do that route, and we'll mm-hmm. talk about some of the things that led through the conversation, you know. Um, yeah, but but we got up and said, hey, this is what it is. Let's pre-plan and 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 take a trip if so, and find out how this thing work, and 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 here we are. Yeah, years right. after. Let let let's 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 bend it out a little bit further. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shelly, you arrived in June. Uh, yeah. Jason, you arrived in September. Uh, fairly mild. Uh, did you ever live overseas or live in the, in one of these northern countries prior to, to moving to Canada? I'm happy when you say fairly mild, because when me catch in at the June, and me see people half naked, three quarter naked, and me a draw for the thickest sweater where me have, me I wonder, what is happening? I was very cold in June. It was ridiculous. I'd never, I've tr- I traveled meagerly, um, but during the summertime. Yeah. But never experienced this. No, mm, 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 it was not mild. It was cowl in the June. How <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, was September, Jason? No, September was good. I mean, I, I love the cold. Um, so, you know, I welcome it any day. I, 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 what I did first, and to, to Shelly, Shelly said, you know, summer was cold. I know when you're making a transition like this, you have to be careful. Right, so that was my calculation. That hey, you know, if you travel at this place and you want to really find out if this place really works for you, travel in the cold. So we actually came before, a couple months before, in the winter. I said oh. the winter works, and I love the winter. I have no problem with the summer because I can't take the heat. So okay. let's try it. So we came into came with came the winter, and I remember when. The, bust the door and came through the airport i was like jesus christ oh my god what a cool it's like somebody just you know so so getting back for the summer for the for the for, for uh, fall just about that point it was like yeah i mean i can't leave this manageable man this manageable you know no sweat or nothing at all and you just you get you get cracking you know but you know, jason you know you remind me of the, the the a story because we came here we had to land in january no Members said, we never come to Canada yet, you know. And so when I landed in January, I was in my Jamaica winter clothes. A sister in, <laughs> should I did meet with at the airport. Their car never did work. At the Toronto airport, they make me line up outside. Wow. Say, I never feel nothing. into me. But I don't like the heat. I prefer the cold. But that, listen to me. Jason, me, me all right. It, it, <laughs> my Jamaican winter outfit was not cutting it for the January. Oh, winter. that's funny. So, all right, hold on. I, I soon go into questions about challenges and all the rest of it. Today, I was at a particular conference with with a number of immigrants, and there was this one young lady from India where we got into a conversation, uh, and I, I I asked her if there is any way to explain minus twenty to mm. somebody in India. Uh, Shelly, Jason, is there any way prior to experiencing minus 20 that you could have explained it to anybody? Remember that I am in <laughs> Montreal, so you're talking about minus 31. Yeah. All right. Um, one, I really do like Jason. I do love the cold. Like the, the, the heat, no. My first real winter, um, it's as if, you get used to it, you know, because I, I start pushing the envelope now, you know. I'm like the one that I, I don't wear my winter clothes up to the very ninth minute. I have to. All Nowadays, right? right? Mm-hmm. But it's it's a lot of mercy. Jason, help me because I really can't explain it. If, <laughs> if, me, I try. If I, if I add tears, I'd say for me, I, I tell people I'm never cold because you kind of dress appropriately mm-hmm. right for the weather at all time i mean when you get your hair lay up lay up and you wonder why you lay up right but but i remember the first time i really feel the wind apart from the airport because you know when you, after you come out the airport you get adjusted the acclimatized you know, acclimatization happening but i really experienced one Sunday morning i went to church down in mississauga it was a minus 42 Mm. And I said to myself, not even your fridge feel like minus 42. Mm. There's nothing that you can pinpoint to mm. tell somebody how minus 42 feels. It was like, you know, literally somebody had like spikes on nails, you know, s- sticking the skin. Mm. It the, the air was so thin. I, I'm like, my gosh, what an experience. Mm. Mm. I, and so, I mean, anybody who is thinking of this experience, uh, Donovan, I, I can't tell you. Open your deep freeze and put it on the deck. Because the deep freeze have no nothing on, on the cold. 
I, I, I would ah. describe it as if you feel it in your bone. It, <laughs> it, 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 it sometimes it goes so deep, you kind of. Mm. And I'd say the eastern side, you know, the eastern side now feel it like that because of the humidity factor. Yeah, Over yeah, here, yeah, like the dry yeah, 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 stuff. The Over this side, I mean, that's why I was happy that I made the transition. It's dry ice on this side. It feels a little differently. It's not as, you. as as bad as on the east, you know. Right, so, and, anyway, there's there's no way you can say it, no bad man. Like no, uh, you know, I I'll share for the viewers. My my coldest experience was minus forty nine in Edmonton. Ooh. Right, I don't know what take me. Say, boy, I'm gonna drive go Edmonton that day, right? And I'll, I'll when you warm up the car for oh, I'm getting warm, <laughs> <laughs> right? So you know, to 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 get it across to people, you 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 talk about you buck the heat, you know, and I make it a run. Now even when you're going out, you're still bungled up, so it's kind of rough. If, right. if I give you an example, Donovan, I give you an example of, of, of cold. Somebody say, you know, you feel it in your soul, and that says it. When I was buying my house, where I live now, the place I lived, you know, we had the garage, and I was testing it because, you know, it's a, this one I was buying wouldn't come with a garage at first and stuff. I decided to park the van outside, real outside, real yeah. snow like experience. And I went out there one morning at five o'clock. I was dropping off somebody because we we're doing some studies and I dropping off the person. And lit I literally almost feel like somebody frees me inside the vehicle. You turn on the vehicle and the vehicle still literally point, have no heat and you're frozen in the vehicle. And I'm like, Jesus. And I'm like, and you, you know, like when you watch a movie or a cartoon and you see in the igloo and you go, and you're all, it was literally that experience in the van. And I'm like, my God, why did I do this to myself? What an experience. <laughs> and I love the cold, but this one was really off a different chart. And I'm like, my, my, my. So I said, boy, if you, if you can't manage it, if you can't manage it, no bother deal with it. Think, think, think but, but you, it. But you can it. learn to love it. I remember a, a friend of mine here in Montreal, um, just as spring was about to you know, show us her beautiful self. That she said, Shelly, when you see people during spring, you it's almost like it's a celebration that we have survived this. It's like a communal effort. Um, and then just seeing it, it's amazing how 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 the environment looks as it moves from winter to spring to summer. Yeah. So all of that ex experience really for me, it the, the coldest and the winter is a part of that life journey. experience that i'm so grateful for it, it's a journey I, I, soon, I soon come back to that because i want to talk about some of the pluses because you know like i said I've, I've been here a few years longer than than you guys so there there are a couple of things that i've come to to appreciate that we we would not have experienced in jamaica mm -hmm. but i want to talk a little sorry a little bit about the challenges right the early days the hurdles what are some of the things that you both had to I'm going to say overcome as part of the transition into into living in Canada. Ah, uh, challenges I would say up front. Um, I, I remember I remember coming out again out of the airport, getting um into 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 the well. For me, I moved into the hotel when I got here because all the plans I had didn't work um uh, in terms of where you're going to live up front, and so I, I ended up in the hotel for for about two weeks. Is it food? It, it's it's one of the challenges that I think even still exists today, you know, because you can't find local Jamaican food. So I, I walked into this into the shop, bought oxtail and took it to the hotel. And I was like, wow, I have to throw this out. This is not oxtail, you know. So I had to deal with food as a part of, of the challenge for me. It was also finding a, a supporting community, right? You know, if you don't have friends, you don't have family, it becomes a challenge for you. If you don't have a community that will be there and so i had to deal with that and luckily for me i had my wife and my son and that was the community that kept us afloat um you know and there was a guy that we knew so you know trying to find that and then the other thing for me was the job market how do you navigate the job market um when you don't have canadian experience when everything is tagged to your experience and you don't have that where do you find that support? Who can you talk to? Where do you go? And so I think those for me are the three major things that that I had to I had to deal with. Mm -hmm. Shelley? Um <laughs> that's an interesting question. And 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 I actually jot down a few points mirroring what Jason uh kind of guided by Jason, because I don't necessarily see I just take life as it is mm -hmm. and make the you know uh, yeah so for me 
food was never a challenge because I was not the one to cook Jamaican food in Jamaica. So <laughs> ask the other lot of these things. I was just an eater, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I have excellent family and friends here. I came to Montreal because a friend said, I'm going away to a Spanish-speaking immersion course and you can come and stay in my apartment for a month for free and see if you like the place. We never left. I have family here from the 1970s. Um, so I have a strong foundation. Mm -hmm. um, I did some research and I knew I had to begin to make my community. And my husband was told the same thing as well. He's a visual artist. So mm -hmm. like the 20, 2019 summer, we got everything. So till me all one winter for come become so busy. Um, so we really got involved. Right. We got involved in the Jamaican community. We got in front. For me, it was, I became, I really came here to live a second life. I had right. an excellent life in Jamaica. And this was an opportunity for me to live a Shelley 2.0. Right. And so I knew I had to, I, I call, I, I had to be more strategic in friend making. I had to be deliberate. It's almost like I was dating people. Mm -hmm. Hi, do you want to come over? Yes. Da, 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 da. Um, getting involved, trying new things. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a plan. Um, and I did a career change. So for me, I knew about the Canadian experience. Um, and I just, just you know, anything will come, we just run in it and just take it. Because we know me needed the years for sure that I, I have the Canadian experience. Mm -hmm. um, but for, I don't know. The entire experience for me was a Shelley 2.0, uh, Garfield 2.0, that's my husband. Mm -hmm. And I think... His strength also strengthened me when I was feeling a little weak. So yeah. having that intimate um, support as my husband, but having friends and family really created an excellent and continue to create an excellent experience for me here in, in Montreal, if, Canada. If I add to you, Shelley, uh, oh, oh, no, no. if I add to you and I say, I mean, to like you, I'm like you because I, I just live life. I, yeah. I go anywhere, yeah. do anything. Yeah. yeah. But I think one of the challenge uh, that that I have found, you know, really around the people piece, is I mean, there are some things culturally that we're used to, and and you have to learn to navigate culture. Oh, culture yes. can can definitely kill you, and that's why you need your own community to help, you know, balance that piece. But you see, where we talk about the getting involved in a Jamaican association, every Jamaican association in this country run differently, function differently, I guess because of the environment. And yes. when I was in Toronto, some people don't connect. And then you get to Calgary, you know, I was told before I even got to Calgary, that is only the aristocratics, you know, hang out with the Jamaican association. Mm. Kind of thing. So you're looking for your community. So one of the things that I wanted to, to, to emphasize is finding people that are that are, are are worthy people good people that you can connect with and sometimes it's difficult because some of the things that we have we have learned in the system we 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 use them to hold people down and i like i've always said this in many many a context that you you end up in these contexts and because we have not expanded our boundaries or our borders 20 years in the system, we don't have anything to add. So persons coming in, you pass them with the wrong information because you didn't even investigate the stuff. And so you find it difficult. So you, you, you're getting roadblocks mm -hmm. instead of opportunities to grow and excel. And so it is. how do we open those doors for, for others as well, you know? <laughs> Excellent and, point, Jason. And, you know, and before that, I'm no say I run the show, but, yeah, but yeah, I, cool. I, it comes yes, <laughs> come to me that one of the things I learned um, before coming here was voluntarily volunteering. Mm -hmm. And I, up to this day, I volunteer, 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 because that is how you make a connection. And I really had no preconceived notion. I expected absolutely nothing more than this wonderful, crazy idea that I had running. You know, um, so again, just 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 come with an open mind, open heart. And the funny thing is that I studied cultural studies. So coming to a space where you have people speaking all languages and dressing and different foods was just a wonderful experience. Uh, so, Shelley, I was going to go to culture and expectations. So maybe let's just segue into that. Mm -hmm. uh, Having not lived here is one thing when you come a foreign and spend two weeks uh, versus when you come and live. True? Yes. Uh, true. Let's talk a little bit about the, the cultural shifts that, that we, we have all had to make and, and the expectations that we came with and whether or not 
what we thought kind of work itself out. And I'll give you one example to, 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 to start. I couldn't understand going on a train and nobody asking me for the ticket. It, it just felt, it was the oddest thing for me in Calgary that you just buy a ticket, you know, this, this honor system. <laughs> Big cultural shift for me until I found out that I saw it work. So let's talk a little bit about some of these cultural shifts that we learned quickly and were forced to adapt to. Um, I, I can think of two. Jesse, you mind me run with this? No, go First, ahead. Mom. Two, yes. Um, one, I still don't get used to it. Is is what? Well, two years plus two years of COVID. Going into a shop and not having a, a supermarket, a store. Uh, a pharmacy and not having to leave your bags at the front with a ticket. <laughs> we all know what Jamaica with is. With a clothespin. Yes. <laughs> and and actually, I would feel when the first year, so conscious, like, I mean, I see people come and how they do it. I don't know if they do it any other way. They have the bag and they're taking things from the grocery in the bag that they carry from home and then mm -hmm. go to the counter and then take it out and pay for it. And I'm like, Never. So that kind of, I don't know, nobody never catch me for shoplifting yet in my life, you know, but because <laughs> of that mentality coming yeah. from Jamaica where you're not trusted to go with in a store with a bag. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. me, not, me not even coming from a space where that was a part of my culture in Jamaica, but just the mentality that you always leave your bag at the front. Also, I am sorry. Some, you step on somebody's toe, they are telling you sorry, I am telling you sorry. And it, and it, even just how we send our emails at work, the, the thank you, please, yeah, yeah. Um, how they ask. The, the, and, and, and that is why the Canadian work experience is so important, I find, from my experience. Mm -hmm. It's a totally different type of telling you to do something before the day end and not telling you to do something before the yeah, day ends. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Giving you a project and not standing over you is almost like me. I said, but this is a multi-million dollar thing and nobody, everybody's like, oh, Shelly, Shelly, you have this undercover, right? The, the client is coming and it's, it's a, you know, near $100 million project, but it's yeah. fine, right? It's yeah. fine. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, okay, good. And I'm like, you trust me. <laughs> <laughs> But that it's I mean, no, no, it, it it has been a wonderful experience big, big and, and eye opening. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, think it I think it's more for me, you know, looking at the a collaborative approach. Um to your point, Shelley, you know, really how do we do this together? You know, we're not forcing you, but we're 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 here to support you. You know, if you if something happened, you know, like you know, some of the challenges that we have had to make adjustment to, like if you said something, you are considered weak uh, in some settings. Um, here, you can simply say it, you know, that hey, this is what is happening. Um, you know, I give an example. Something happened uh, at work once, and my first response was, Jason, you know, you can't say this, you know, but you're like, how can I not say it? The culture that you're a part of now requires that you say something, and and you get help and support. Back home, you don't say certain things because you're weak. You know, people look at you a little differently. So you have to adjust to the culture. Sometimes my wife and I will be talking and you're like, we're like, uh, you know, you have to understand the system and adapt to it and, and realize that these are just some of the expectations as, as if something is wrong. Go Because when, when, when it falls on you or when, when you don't accomplish the task, then it's going to be, so what happened? Why didn't you come before? Why didn't you say mm -hmm. something? You know, mm -hmm. so you have to kind of change that mindset to say, okay, fine, how do we get into that supportive space or collaborative space where we're working together? And then to your point, uh, Donovan, about the, the, the train and the bus, I, I think part of it for me at first was, wow, this is a country that really trusts you. You know, they trust mm -hmm. you with everything. You know, mm -hmm. it's built on trust. So if you said this is the thing, you know, we're expecting that that is the thing. If you yeah. change it, then you know that you are now at fault because yeah. we really trust. We're not looking for you, watching you kind of a thing. So really put your best foot forward. And I mean, that took me some time. Uh, and, and the reason why is that from yard, everything bad. Yeah. Everywhere you turn, you know, you have your grill, your grill lock. Yeah, you know, you, you, this you, your vehicle, and you, you make sure that you're always on your P's and Q's. And so I've always let my guard, you wouldn't let your guard down. 
Yeah. And 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 and, and to that point, I remember, you know, um, I was at Rexdale one day washing the vehicle in a, in a, and, and stuff. And about, I would say about uh, 20 feet apart between the bay and, and where the thing is. And I washing the vehicle, right? And I took out the mats and put them down at the thing. And my wife was standing up right there. And um, I'm like, okay. I saw this car driving up. It drove right up, stopped there. I thought he was going to vacuum his car. And I'm like, okay, no problem. Turn around and start washing. You know, the guy took up the mats put them in the car and drive off you know in my head jamaica kick in again i'm like listen trust nobody everybody guilty you know kind of thing <laughs> and you're like no man how could how could that happen because what you felt that sense of safety yeah you know mm -hmm. that hey this place is safe and you had to kind of ad address that quickly in your mind to say hey this place still have crime and violence you know things yeah. are still happening here yeah. too, you know? so it's just that it's not promoted on the front page like how we promote it i had and I i'm glad you raised that question or made that point because i want to go down the point of was there anything that you took for granted that maybe you shouldn't have as part of this whole process mm. uh, go ahead Shelley. <laughs> um <clears throat> i would say no because i'm the first one to say i lived jamaica i am jamaica and so I take nothing from Jamaica. Maybe what I hmm, what I may have taken from Jamaica is that for granted is how great Jamaica is, how how people love Jamaica and Jamaicans. How once you hear the, the accent, they're like, huh? I mean, I know I live in a French province, so that even make me more distinct. Um, but the, the 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 magnitude of the Jamaican culture and legacy. Um, can only really be experienced um, when when you're outside of Jamaica. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I will top that up because my my sister-in-law said the very same thing because she traveled a lot, lived overseas uh, uh, in some other countries before moving here. And, and she would say, you know, you guys never really understood, you know, this thing about being Jamaican mm -hmm. and being out, you know, until you step outside of Jamaica. And I think sometimes we take that for granted that Jamaica is a is a lovely space, a beautiful space. Um, while I don't want the heat of Jamaica right now, I mean, I miss, you know, like I said, for granted for me is the opportunity to have access quickly. You want to just quickly flip in and flip out of Jamaica. You want to get access to beach. Here, here, here's what really I took for granted. And, and this just hit me a while ago because it's something I'm looking for now. You know, hotels, you know, like just simple to go to the hotel in Jamaica and go all inclusive. And you don't have that here it's like it's like a it's like a killer because i used to go regularly right like hey the hotel yeah. is my place and you get here to hotel and all you get is really concrete jungle hotel kind yeah. of a thing you're right um, a room. yeah a room that's <laughs> it nothing room. else that's it right and you're like leave my room to, to, you know and stuff so i'm like no how do you not have access to 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 beach and all you can eat and stuff like that all the time you know so so i wish sometimes that that could be but i don't know how that will be but yeah that, that i think uh, you know couples with you know just being jamaican real jamaican so let's segue then into into some of the the, the wonderful elements of the change some of the things that you have gotten here that you know you have come to appreciate even more deeply well for me i would say um i think it's an excellent space and i and if i if i can i'll big up alberta for for me because alberta for me is a it's a space that we investigated look at research and stuff and found that it's a it's a good space to raise a family and i think right now with being within the context i mean you can do that anywhere in canada but for me alberta gives me the feel of almost like home right because i can look through my window and i see the mountains right here which is good right the sunshine is bright it's setting in the west where it's the best right kind of a thing um i, I like the idea of uh, the school systems you know you take some things for granted but the school system here uh, while it has some things definitely a lot to work on from what we're used to um, i think there are some things that are, are noteworthy within the system that you want to take you know in terms of how do we help our students to progress and to grow we're not all going to be brainiacs but we have other areas how do we help support you in those particular area um, where the security is concerned I mean in while it is that you're still looking out of your eyes you still have a security that your space is safe right um, to some degree and so depending on the community but in most cases I, I, I appreciate that as a value for me that hey this space is good I think 
one other thing that, that that jumps out for me as well is just around, and I'll say this and then give uh, Shelly a chance. I, it, this was a shocker for me, um, but something that I appreciate and uh, not looking for it at the same time. <laughs> you know, when you get to a system where the government gives you back money <laughs> and, and you're not used to getting money back home kind of a thing, and I'm like, you really getting money? So my first time we got to the center, I said, no, don't use the money because maybe it's a trick. Maybe they tried to give you this money as a way to, to trap you and then you have to give back some money and you realize that you don't have to give this and, and you know, you're getting child tax benefits and all the different different incomes that you're getting. Yeah. You're like, wow, wow, this is really happening. So for me, that's a big benefit, a big change. And while you don't bank on it, you're happy that it happens because it does stop a gap here or there from time yeah. to time, you know? So so that for me is something that we have to, really have to, to think about and really appreciate. Um, excellent points, Jason. Let me start with security. As a female in Jamaica, I was held up about twice, twice, and um, our home was robbed, took our computers. This was in the middle of my PhD with everything panicked. Um, for me here in Montreal, security, my security as a female is so precious. I feel so safe here. Um, I go to the gym at, I'm out of the house by 5.30 in the morning and it throughout the, throughout the year. Um, I'm on the bus cause me still love the road. So one o'clock, me still depend on the boss. Me one, <laughs> I'm husband. Usually he's like a security guard for me. Don't have sleep long time because everything set. Um, that that level of security, mm -hmm. again, you only realize the weight it plays on you mm -hmm. um, when you're outside and when you're in a different environment. Um, the opportunities to change career and to reinvent self and the support system that exists, mm -hmm. both as it relates to getting support for education, re-educating yourself, um, volunteering, um, all the different, ex talk about something that you want to experience, think about it, Google it, and there's an organization around somewhere near your neighborhood. Right. Um, access to support, I mentioned that. We have one point here. Mm. Yes. So. That's it. Hmm. I, I'm going to throw one in, even though typically I'm asking the questions. I have come to absolutely appreciate the changing of the seasons. Oh. It is a most delightful Magical. experience yeah. to, uh, you know, for those who are, who are religious and spiritual, just to see nature and God at work. Mm -hmm. And for those who are just looking for artistic beauty, it, it's... I'm, I'm Jamaica pretty, you know, love yeah. Jamaica and the beauty that it brings, but there is something about the, the changing of the seasons that uh, it's it's hard to put into words, but it's a it's a deeply appreciated thing, at least for me over the years. Yeah, that uh, renewing of the spirit, that, that bush that you see for six months, that beer, and then it's almost like it happened like this. Yeah. It's just lush. Months. And it turned from yellow to green to red. Yeah, and it's, yeah. just, it's just an amazing experience yeah, that yeah. we wouldn't have experienced uh, back in yeah. the tropics, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, the clock is ticking, and, and there are a couple of questions I want to, 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 to tap into before we go. Uh, people are always looking to, 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 to get out of Jamaica in some cases. Some people, mm -hmm. right, are looking for opportunities. Uh, what kind of advice, if you had to sit down with, with somebody who is was thinking of the move, having done it now and having lived through it, you know, and I, I get to do this a few times. What are some of the key things that you'd want to tell them? And you guys have taken different routes to being here. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've had this conversation many a times uh, with people, whether it is that they want to go to school, whether it is that they want to look at the express, express entry. Uh, my first question always is, why do you want to leave? And if it is that you are you know, thinking of leaving, then you need to define that for yourself, why? 
and, and make sure that you are comfortable with the decision that you're making. The second thing that I normally ask is, are you trying to do this alone or is this something that is being done with, with, with family? Because if you're not necessarily putting family within the mix, then that, that generally poses its channel. As a matter of fact, it's one of the things that um, the Canadian government puts within the documentation, you know, just saying that, hey, if you're thinking about moving, you want to ensure that you have your uh, family supports. So if you don't have family here or, or a good tight network here that you're coming into, it can be one of the darkest experience you will have because it's easy for you to pack up your bags and go home. And I've had many persons that have talked with me, um, you know, within my circle or outside, just, hey, I just want to pack up and go home. I can't deal with it because depending on the province that you end up in and the, num the, the amount of sunshine you may get, that's something, a factor that may drive a level of depression as well, right? And so because of because of that depression that 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 happens um you want to ensure that um you know you have family to support you you want to also ensure that you have the resources that you're looking that that um that you that you need to make this journey because coming into the space where you don't have a job immediately in most cases and you have to start from ground zero and as a matter of fact i i want i want to add that as something that's critical that a lot of times when you get here you have to start at ground zero Yep. And so because you have to start at ground zero, if you don't have the willpower mm -hmm. to ride the attitude, the mindset to ride the storm, knowing that it's a storm that you're going to go through. As a matter of fact, I would say this, Donovan, that, that each of us, and you made it for each of us, come through different channels and doors and windows and rooftops and underground. So many things happen to people when they get here. Mm -hmm. And I've dealt with so many of them, you know, myself, because, you know, the role I have within the community as well, you have to deal with that. It's an, it's a nightmare. And if you don't have the guts, don't make the transition. There's a lot more that can be added, but I, I give yeah. Shelly some yeah. as well. Yeah. Thanks, Jason. Excellent points. Um, I think I really am just going to reiterate your points because it boiled down to the same thing um research 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 uh i the forums that they have for people immigrating whatever the route is that you're taking um read them be a part of them and as you read them believe that what they're saying is true and see if even in while you're in jamaica that you can create an attitude or a plan within yourself as to how you are going to um, overcome that struggle. So for me, um, the whole thing about having that um, starting from ground zero and having that Canadian experience, I thought and I said to myself, well, you know, I don't necessarily want to come to Canada and teach and be a lecturer in cultural studies. I think I did that for Jamaica and I've given Jamaica that as my contribution, as one of my contribution to the nation. And so I took that attitude that I'm going to come and do Shelley 2.0. And so I could just reinvent myself. And that means getting the Canadian experience, getting a diploma, starting all over again. I'm on my master's now, you know. Um, so research, preparing yourself and, and begin to change your mindset and making the obstacles that you know you will face, finding strategies to deal with them, either your mindset or knowing that you need to volunteer everywhere to get that Canadian experience because it equals to Canadian experience. Having that funds, um, having that financial security when you're in a foreign country, even if you have, I have excellent friend and family support here in Montreal, but you having that fund, that financial support in your pocket, in the bank, in your pocket, that allows you to breathe a little easier and we we come, we know say in a jamaica we can take make turn and make fashion and really squeeze everything the last drop of everything you need those skills to make your money stretch you know um and be open-minded this is a multi um cultural space with every country every race every language every lifestyle and it has built its, its, its own culture on that difference. Mm -hmm. um, if you come with a certain mindset, struggle. You're, you are going to struggle. Like you yeah. will get yourself in trouble, <laughs> severe yeah. trouble. You know? All right. 
Yeah. Listen, la last question, God, the clock is ticking. Uh, what's the most fun and fulfilling experience or thing that you have done uh, in, 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 in your time here? I'm going to share one. Mm -hmm. I, I had a chance to, to drive through, <clears throat> you know, with the pandemic, to do some road trips in Alberta. And I drove up to Jasper, where mm -hmm. you got a chance to see a black bear on the road and also to go and walk on the ice fields. An absolutely amazing experience. Wow. You know, I, 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 I want to do that. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you, I, want, I, I actually have a video of a black bear because in one of my role that I had, I traveled across the prairie land and, and, and lands and stuff. So I had to, I've been through almost all of Alberta. But mm. I've just I've gotten as far as Hinton. Okay, okay. And I, yeah. and, I and I just and I just have them. But my one of the things that I one of the things that I've done that I really enjoy is flying over into Newfoundland um uh not Yellowknife. Yeah. Yellowknife is one of the most beautiful places I've been. I, I told I told my wife I would pack up from Calgary and go to Yellowknife because you have access to the pond and it feels like you're sitting at the Elsha Beach. <laughs> and you're eating fish and enjoying it. It's a different kind of space altogether. I like it, you know. So for me, I, I'd say that that tops number one. Just just going not that direction. But there's a lot more things that I've done throughout the pandemic, but and since I've been here, but that one stands out. So All right. So my excuse for not having wonderful stories as you two is that two years out of my four was pandemic. Uh -uh. And a friend of mine said to me, Shelly, it takes three to five years to settle. So what I've done, I've really enjoyed Montreal. Mm -hmm. This city, I, I tell you, I run it red. <laughs> this city is so full of life. Yeah. It's so full of things, of people, of things to do, of places to be. Um, so I fill my calendar. And you know, after a while, you know, like, <laughs> like, like the best poutine, or somebody do some jerk chicken poutine, or jerk jerk cheese poutine, or something. I don't know. Come on, man. All right, all right. Hold on, hold on. Barbecue in the park with friends. Yeah. God, like, you know, really a park. What kind of barbecue? You don't know the barbecue at Jamaica? No. Well, yeah, barbecue. Barbecue in the park is really a park culture over here as well. Park every week, every week we go to the park. Do, do, do you know? Do you know, Donovan? I think that's one of the things too that you know stand out. I put banana on my finger. You know that sometimes, you know, to Shelley's point earlier that you take your hand and turn fashion. You know, I like planting, and I can't get to plant nothing at all per se. It's like right now I have my farm outside. You know, box up and everything, and uh, all the Canadian produce are growing well. <laughs> Kalalu and the Jamaican. Um, no, me well, I know, well, I know. Somebody asked me this this morning. My brother said to me, "Hey, when I plant some, um, get a mango tree, and if you can work out the science and can modify the water stuff and that it can deal, then you, you know you, you, you're on the verge of something." But I have some Jamaican corn outside, and they must struggle for growing on the cold. Me have some color, they must struggle for growing on the cold. And but the, but the Canadian ones that have have been modified, are they know what to do in the way? They know how to do it. Yes. Cool thing. Them not grow in Jamaica. Yeah, you ever yeah. go to Jamaica and see people are plant, plant grape in their backyard? <laughs> Our American apples. Our apple. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, the plant apple in their backyard. Uh, that that is what I miss, you know. So I normally pay anybody coming up. I I pay for a whole suitcase of fruits and and, and something. Anybody uh, coming up, if I if they're willing to carry it for me, I'll pay for it, you know. But yeah. All right, listen, this this has been absolutely awesome, right? I think we all take some gems from this. And hopefully people watching, whether live <clears throat> or recorded, can, can learn some from the experience that, that you both have shared with us here on Wataguan. Uh, we could keep going, but we'll have to stop. Shelly, Jason, thank you so much for being on Time to Reason here on Wataguan. And what well, good. And we, we chat again some other time. Much thank respect. You. Thank you. And good to meet you too, Shelly. Nice to meet you, Jason. Bye, <laughs> Donovan. Bye. All right, take care. Bye. Like All most right. of our 
our conversations and you could be going on and on and on for the next I three know, hours. I know, <laughs> this one looks really cool. I love this one, I love this one. Not true. Thank you to both Shelly and Jason. That was excellent and it's, it's a great perspective to have. You know, and, and even though we, we might not dig into it a little bit, uh, when, when you listen to those stories, and I mean, you're, you're born here and you understand uh, some of the, the Jamaicans who have moved here and especially, you know, for people dealing with, with different changes. How does that make you feel, you know, in terms of how they have adapted and the, the culture and all of that? Well, I, I, I've got to see it. So my stepbrothers came um, from the island. So I got to see like their first snowfall and the, the change of the seasons and the food yeah. and all of those different. So I live vicariously through them and it's a pretty fantastic to watch. Yeah. Um, I, every time I see new people coming into our city or in our, in our province, it's a great perspective to have. And I encourage them to get involved and to share that information, especially since I don't have that same, same kind of experience, but it's, right. it's a great thing to see. Yeah. So Van saying, us saying good evening. Hey Van, how are you? Hope, hope things are good. Uh, Jackie listening from I want from to say England. hi to Jackie too. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> from hey Jackie. England. It's uh, late there. If you're, if you're in Colchester, see you in a week or two. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. Listen, uh, who is this? Sharon, nice show. Yeah, and so she's uh, nice show. So that's great. I, I'm going to mm -hmm. take off so you can wrap up. But I, I want to say thank you for being on the show in June. Love the vibes. Love the Winnipeg representation. And, you know, hopefully we get to do it again. For sure. You know where to find me. All right, sounds good. Uh, all right, take care. I'm out. Have a good night. All right. So, yes, um, that was a great show. So thank you both of our guests for being here. And that was a great topic. If you missed it, again, you can go back onto our YouTube channel and our Facebook page to catch a recap of that. Um, don't forget www.whatagoan.ca is the email, or sorry, is the website. So don't forget to get that there and to share that, share those um, information, all of that, the Snapchat, the YouTube, the Instagram, all of those, make sure you're sharing with far and wide so that everybody can share in the experience of what to go on national. So before I leave, I wanted to go back and talk about our Patwa word of the day first. And I wanted to make sure that I shout out David and... David Betty and Prudence Betty. Sorry, I went back, sorry. I, the word of the day was dibby dibby. And I don't think I saw anybody from our comments that actually had it, but our both of our guests used it in their introduction and they were talking about the show itself. So it's dibby dibby is supposed to be about bad quality. And this was not, none of that, our show was great. So that would be the, the definition of dibby dibby would be bad quality or little, little quality, low quality, stuff like that. That's where you would get that definition for our Patwa word of the day. And then, as I was mentioning earlier, the um, spot, the place. We had two of our guests or our viewers today get that, uh, that one correct, David Betty and Prudence Betty. They were in, in a race, I guess, to see who can get that faster. But Niagara Falls is the correct answer. And like I said, if you have a chance, if you're in Canada, if you're visiting Canada, if you have a chance to go to Niagara Falls, check it out. It is a beautiful, beautiful piece of nature. Niagara Falls is a group of three waterfalls in the southern end of Niagara Gorge, uh, spanning the border between the provinces of Ontario and Canada and the state of New York in the U.S. So um, yeah, definitely check that out if you are able to. I definitely want to say thank you to all of our viewers today um, for all of you interacting with us, saying hello, um, and just having a great show together. And this show doesn't go on without you guys. So from myself, it was a pleasure to be your host for the month of June. Thank you so much for welcoming me for the team at Watagoan National. Thank you so much for inviting me. I had a great time. I hope you enjoyed it at home. And I hope you continue to watch every week on Fridays, except next Friday, which will be uh, Canada Day.
So there will be no show. And for July, you will have a fantastic new host. And I hope you tune in, spread the word, join in the, the phenomenon that is Watagoan National. I hope that you have a fantastic and safe Canada Day weekend and enjoy the rest of your weekend. From Winnipeg, this is Nadia Thompson. I had a wonderful evening. Be safe and take care. Thank <laughs> you.